All right, y'all, this week we're going off grid in search of hot springs and waterfalls. We've done some research and found one of the coolest dry camping spots in Oregon. Here we are in the Umpqua National Forest. And hopefully we can give you some good tips and tricks if you wanna get out here and get disconnected yourself. I mean, really disconnected. Like I haven't seen cell service in a long time. <laughs> Well, step number one is not going so great. They may not know what dry camping is. So let me explain that to you real quick. That would have been terrible. Don't do that. Make sure you put the plug back in before you put the new coil in. <laughs> you just took orders from Iraq. Are you stoned? <laughs> Looks kind of sketchy to me. I think this is the tallest waterfall we will have ever seen and the third tallest waterfall in Oregon. That is so high. That is wild how it just is pure ice at the bottom of this thing. Hold on, I want to do a video. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad way to finish the day, y'all. Okay, we made it. Now we just need to pick our spot. And these are actually pretty, like, legit sites. Yeah. Fire pits and all. Oh, that's a heck of a view. Jeez. <laughs> all right, as you come back, make sure you come back uh, hard passenger. Zero cell phone service up here. So this is one of the cases where the walkie-talkies are clutch. I'd say that'll do it. Might be the biggest space you've ever parked in, but good job. <laughs> we won't assume that everyone that watches this channel owns an RV and they may not know what dry camping is. So let me explain that to you real quick. That's what we're doing right now without any sewer, water, or electricity. But our electricity situation is solved with the generator behind us. Yeah, so technically we're cheating. We are dry camping, not boondocking, right? No, sorry, opposite. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> We've used this generator a lot of times and they do recommend that every hundred hours of usage, you go ahead and change the oil, which is what we're doing right now. You see that little Gatorade bottle draining it out. Don't drink that. Don't drink it. 
<laughs> <laughs> we have the Champion open frame inverter. It actually goes up to 4,000 starting watts, which is more than enough for running our AC. We bought this after some research and it happened to be on sale at the time. I heard a lot of people say that the closed frame is quieter and better for like more close quarters. So we might have to look into that in the future. But for now, this works just fine because we have no neighbors. Yeah, we rolled up here and we are solo. Got the place all to ourselves, so should be pretty fun. Dry camping is awesome for two reasons, because sometimes it gives you the opportunity to camp in a place that you wouldn't normally be able to camp at. And second, you can save money. Now, so far, the only thing that we've spent money on is gas and oil. And our generator, not even gonna use this whole court. You might wanna close it first. You gotta waste all of our oil. That would have been terrible. Don't do that. Make sure you put the plug back in before you put the new oil in. <laughs> I knew this whole time I was literally watching you to see if you would realize it. Don't worry, I wasn't actually gonna let you make it. I'm standing like 10 feet away from it after we started it and yeah, it's a little loud, but as soon as I'm on the other side of the RV, I can barely hear it. And plus, once you get used to it, it's no big deal. But we're definitely going to, in the future, look into a quieter generator. Now it's time to solve our water problem. And yes, it's a problem because we thought we were going to be able to fill up at a ranger station just around the corner from where our dry camping spot is. However, that did not work out so well. Okay, the Tokiti Ranger Station. Well, step number one is not going so great. <laughs> we had read somewhere that you can fill up water at the Tokiti Ranger Station, which is a couple of miles from where we're gonna be dry camping. You can fill up water. However, you can only fill up jugs and you can't connect a hose because they won't allow that. Uh, and we don't have jugs, so. We had a jug, so. We're gonna have to figure this out, but we will figure this out. Now, for those unfamiliar with RV life, had we been able to get fresh water from the ranger station, we would have put it directly into this RV and we've got a pump that would work without being hooked up to water. If we've got a huge tank and normally we don't even fill the whole thing when we're dry camping. We just wanted a little bit. So our solution is to head 20 minutes down the road to a general store, pretty much the only thing anywhere around here uh, and get jugs of water. So looks like we're gonna be dirty folks for the next two days because no showers. So actually this general store, it might be a little far down the road, but it quite literally has everything that you need. And it is right next to where our backup campground was gonna be yeah, in case we couldn't. Last resort. Yeah, it's actually called Umpqua's Last Resort. It says, turn me over. You just took orders from Iraq, are you stoned? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So we haven't exactly told you where we're dry camping. We're at Clearwater Four Bay number two. So we did a little research. This is at the top of a lot of the most popular dry camping spots in Oregon. We're here in the Cascade Mountains at about 3,000 feet elevation. It's November and it's a little chilly outside. Yes, and I think we're actually right between like two snow events because it snowed a couple of weeks ago and now it's completely melted, almost completely, and it's supposed to start snowing again next week. Yeah, in like two <laughs> days. So we found a little window to get up back to the mountains with the RV. This is actually one of the few boondocking or dry camping spots that we've been to that GPS actually led us directly to. Usually you have to find some kind of weird coordinates and put them in your GPS that way. Okay, but fair warning. There's no signal within 20 to 30 miles either of where way. we are in either direction. Crater Lake is about 30 miles in one direction, and you're going towards Roseburg, Oregon in the other direction. No service out here. So you want to make sure you have that in the GPS and do not close that out. But Better it, yet, download the map before you come. Yeah, it, 
put in Tokati Ranger Station. That should get you within two miles of this dry camping spot, and they can actually direct you. So good news and bad news. We are the only people up here, which is awesome sauce. Bad news is, is we had a little bit of a power issue last night. Yeah, we couldn't get our generator to power our RV. Like it would turn on and everything, but there was something up with the connection. And if I'm being honest, I was actually just a little sketched out. It was a little too dark and too quiet for me to try anymore. And I was figuring that we would be okay overnight. So. We couldn't really get that on film because it was dark out and the stars were amazing as you've already seen. Thankfully, we did have enough battery to do true boondocking and it ran our heat through most of the night with the propane. Bad news is, is that battery was pretty much dead by the time we woke up. So it was freezing in the <laughs> RV. I was warm under the covers, yeah. I don't know about you. But good news is, is that for some reason, we popped on the generator and the connection did work this morning. So we are all good. And caffeinated, thank goodness it worked. <laughs> yeah, have to have that coffee. Now that we've got all of our issues resolved, again, it's not always smooth, this RV life thing, uh, we're excited for the day because we've got a couple of waterfall hikes and a reward at some hot springs. First stop, Tokati Falls. So this is actually pretty cool. The spot that we're in, Clearwater Forvey, number two, uh, is part of a hydroelectric system. And if you can see across the way, that pipe right there is basically doing the same thing right here in front of us. And they're running water from the top of the Cascade Mountains down through here to create electricity, which I think is pretty dope. Yeah, I don't exactly know what a four bay is, but it <laughs> seems to be just a collection of water that is grouped together. And I guess it's only purpose is to go down that pipe. We're just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Did I do that on purpose? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. So we just pulled up to the Tokati Falls Trailhead, and that pipe, I don't know, is that pipe supposed to be doing that? Oh, I don't think it's supposed to be doing that, I don't think. This thing looks like it's actually made of wood, if you look closely enough. Yeah. So it looks like some of the solutions is just sticking sticks and holes. They literally jab stakes in some of the holes to keep them from leaking. This has to be really old, otherwise it'd be made out of different material, right? You Maybe they're so. just trying to hold on to what they have. Looks kind of sketchy to me. 97 steps up and 125 steps down. Not too bad. So first hike of the day, Tokati Falls. Supposed to be one of the more popular waterfalls in the Cascade Mountains and it's an easy one. It's only 0.4 in, 0.4 out. Tokati also means pretty or graceful in Chinook. So we're about to see how pretty it is. Here we go with the steps again. They're the devil, and we say it all the time, but I think there's 297 of them up to the top of this thing. Oh. This is the hardest part. It's worth it. So how big is this thing? Uh, the top tier is 40 feet and the bottom tier is 80. So math, 120. <laughs> Nailed it. Project RV, we're all about an easy payoff. And this was exactly that. Less than a mile hike and a view like that. It's things like this in the Pacific Northwest that make you feel like you're in Jurassic Park. <laughs> I 
just like to point out, Victoria, she'll do anything to get the shot. <laughs> and our second waterfall hike of the day, and I'm gonna have to check the numbers, but I think this is the tallest waterfall we will have ever seen and the third tallest waterfall in Oregon. This is the Watson Falls Trail, and from what I understand, I think it's about 0.4 in, 0.4 out. So a little bit more of the same as the last one. Oh wow, you can see it from right here. Wow. Jeez. That is so high. this before little kids and old people both are on this trail and anyone can do it however we'll note 370 feet of elevation gain in less than half a mile oh shoot so that's why we're huffing and puffing <laughs> ice at the bottom of this thing. All that ice down there looks fluffy. Probably not fluffy. Like I said, we're gonna have to check the numbers, but this could easily be the biggest waterfall and the coolest waterfall we've ever seen. It's pretty cool and something about like the frozen water around and the snow makes it like extra special. <laughs> I will say they tell you to come during the spring when this thing is really raging, but I don't know kind of partial to the ice waterfall. It's very Game of Thrones. Look how big this leaf is. Way bigger than your head. Oh, That's wow. Like Jurassic Park leaf. <laughs> okay, we're headed back down. Definitely worth the effort. And as Victoria says, you can deal with that elevation with a little bit of time and grace. That right there coming down, that's the pipe where our campground is. That's where we were showing y'all earlier. Yep. That's that so is, crazy. Uh, it's pretty high up there. One water slide I will not be going down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's the main event, Umpqua Hot Springs. So this is the deal. Normally we would be able to drive right up to the trailhead and walk 0.3 miles down to the hot springs. But we believe since they've had their first snow, they've closed this road. And now we've added a mile and a half in each direction. It better be worth it. So uh, work's not over yet. There are a couple of things that we have gotten a little better at here in the last day and a half. Sign reading and map reading skills. Yeah, uh, since we have zero service and yeah, no GPS yeah, right the, now. The other thing is uh, operating our Apple watches and iPhones with our noses. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> these don't work. No, we don't have the right gloves. Oh, that's pretty good. Hold on, I want to do a video. <laughs> Did you get it? No, well, that's pretty good. Professional. Okay, we did our mile and a half and we are officially to the official trailhead. Now we got another point three. That's 
the restroom, according to the reviews. We found it, but uh, to keep it family friendly, we might need to turn the camera off. Yep. As with other things in Oregon, things tend to be clothing optional. Yeah, that's it. That's a good way to describe it. We made it. Not bad. Probably the coolest hot springs we've been to. Definitely worth it. There's a ton of people here. We're actually in the lowest hot spring, so it's a little tiered, and obviously the higher up you go, the hotter it is, so we're waiting for that spot to clear out. But P.S. is actually not the lowest lowest. If you go down to the left, there are a couple more pools. Uh, I guess if you're here during the summer, they might still be warm enough, but right now, no, it's no good. Cold. Not a bad way to finish the day, y'all. If you haven't gotten to a natural hot spring, you should probably do that. Okay, you about ready to head out? I think it's about that time. Yeah, we're losing sunlight. All right, y'all, definitely worth the effort. The one thing I will say is if you come in November, brace yourself for getting out of that hot spring and it being 40 something degrees outside. Oh my goodness, it is so, you think it's 40? I guarantee you it's less than that. I don't know. Uh, it's just before sunset. Uh, the thing is, is you know, you're all wet and you try and dry yourself off and then you gotta like make sure you're completely dried off before you put on the warm clothes. This, people are just like falling all over the place <laughs> out there. But the one thing I will say is it's a Saturday. It was super packed. There was probably about 25 people out there. So I don't know, I guess it depends on what time of year you come. All packed up and that is a wrap on our off-grid adventure and honestly it's probably the last time that we get the RV up into the Cascade Mountains before we leave Oregon because we don't love driving this thing through the snow. And we don't own uh, snow tires or snow chains, chains or, or whatever anything. you snowy people do. And have no desire to so. <laughs> but don't worry we've still got about four more-ish weeks of Oregon adventures coming your way. This is important. Everything that you saw in this episode happened within six miles of our camping spot. And speaking of our camping spot, we might as well knock this out. A Project, Project RV, RV Boondock Project Review. Clearwater for bay number two. Like we said, it was easy to pull up in a map and it took us right here. Uh, it's free, uh, but there's a 14 day limit. And there's about 10 campsites of varying sizes. Yeah, it's a little bit different than other boondocking areas where it actually has real campsites in it. Yeah, it's got a picnic table and a fire pit. It's probably important to know if you're gonna come up to this campsite, it is a dirt road and a pretty steep hill, so four wheel drive would certainly be useful. Had this place all to ourselves and love staying here. And it was fun getting disconnected. Yeah, we had absolutely no service the entire time with our phones, which is AT&T, but we do hear that there might be some Verizon service, just so you know. I hear puppies whining and getting impatient, so it's time to wrap this thing up. We'll catch you next Sunday, y'all. Bye. Bye.